You've said before, if I can just turn a little bit to, to decision making for a second, you've said before that I don't believe in taking right decisions, I take decisions and then I make them right. Um, how did you come to build that philosophy? I'm sorry, I'm going to upset you, but Facebook or Twitter that, that made that statement, it was never made by me. That's not you. <laughs> well, that's awkward. Uh, <laughs> And so, so it's been a default statement. You, you come to know of it when people read them back to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, there's no remedial action that you can take with the social media. True. Uh, and, and so you live with it. Some people think it's arrogant for you to have state, stated that and you don't have a chance to defend yourself by saying you never did. And some people think it's a great thing to say and you quietly keep quiet. <laughs> so. <laughs> maybe instead then what I could ask is, is generally speaking, um, you know, maybe a very important decision that you had to make um, throughout your, your long and tenured career that, that you can share with us. And, um, maybe more generally your decision-making philosophy then. And we'll have a new Twitter quote. <laughs> I'll try not to make this as long an answer as the first time. Uh, maybe, maybe two instances uh, were stand out in my mind as, as being uh, instances that had a bearing on being right or wrong as the case might be. The first that comes to mind is we, we developed, as you know, a small car called the Nano. We decided that we would establish the factory in Calcutta because industry had moved away from the eastern part of India. And we thought a revolutionary car could be in a place that brought employment back to eastern India. We unfortunately got um, embroiled in a political battle between the, the government of West Bengal and an aspiring leader, political leader, a lady, who vowed that she would not allow a single car to come out of this factory. And the war of words went on between her and me the factory was almost 85% complete and I had to take a decision that given the fact that we had dead bodies thrown on the site, we had shootings, we had people beaten up that I couldn't look at our employees in their eye and say that you'll work in this factory. So we decided or I decided that we would move. And we decided that in the dead of night. And we started moving a completed car plant over the next several days. I think with about 1,400 large tractor trailer trucks, we moved the plant out and ended up in Gujarat, which is Mr. Modi's uh, state. Uh, we lost a lot in that period of one year where we rebuilt that plant. To this day, one will never know whether we did the right thing or not. Uh, I personally believe that that was the only option we had, but it became a very ugly decision that had to be taken. The, the second... Um, if you might challenge that I faced completely different was when 10 Pakistani terrorists descended on Bombay and, and uh, amongst the places they attacked, they attacked our hotel. And um, about <clears throat> 37 or 40 people in our hotel were, were shot and killed for no reason. 
And then it became an issue that do you stand by and let this happen or do you go into the midst of what was like a war zone and stand with your employees and and go to their the homes of people who who were killed and and we I chose to do the latter to go every day to the hospitals to to uh, to look at the people who were injured and there again that leaves a lasting impression on you in terms of what happened, what could have been done to avoid it, and how could you deal with this? What was the best form of support you could give to your people? I think those two instances stand out as being challenging moments in, in uh, one's career. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.